Hi folks, Mr. Teslonian here. What we're gonna do today is build a gasifier unit for a friend of mine that lives in a tiny house. He's asked me for a gasifying system that'll function to produce wood gas for his cooking stove, for his lanterns, and as well as for running his generator. So I asked for some materials to build the project and I've got now a couple propane tanks to do it with. I'm using the old tromp hammer, the original tromp hammer and tank. I've got much better designs now, so we're gonna go ahead and cut that thing up and use it for this gasifier. Uh, we've got some old sheet steel there. I think that was a giant square square D box cover for a, I think it was a school or something. So we're going to use this scrap metal here. We're going to put together a nice downdraft style gasifier. So the first part of this is going to be removing these tops that you see here. The handles, and I've already cut them off of two of them. So we're going to go ahead and pop those off. That way you can see that part of the propane tank. The next part of this obviously is going to unthread your valve here. Now if you've never taken apart or cut into a propane tank, I actually don't suggest that you ever do it. All right, so the first step of this is gonna to be to get the two big tanks that you see here. We're gonna put those together and make a nice tall tank out of it. You couldn't find me any tall tanks, so we're gonna make one out of the two shorter tanks. So obviously the way to do that is come down and cut two of the tanks here. This one right here. We're gonna cut this one right here. We're gonna go ahead and flip this tank over on the cut, weld that back together. Then we'll go into the other side of one of the sides here, cut our opening to feed, and then the other one we'll cut our opening that'll go into the reduction zone and into our burn chamber. So let me go ahead and start this out by cutting the two of these and getting those welded together, and I'll show you what it looks like. So as you can tell here, I've cut the tops off of both of those propane tanks. You can see they're a little bit different in size. You can see this one's a little bit smaller than that one. And that allows me not to have such a perfect cut around my rims. I'm not trying to marry together two perfect cuts right there, rim to rim. What I have here is a little bit of a bevel in here from the curvature, and this one's right at the flare out. So this one will overlap this just slightly, giving me a nice even edge all the way around that I can weld without a bunch of grinding. Uh, the next step here is to flip that upside down right on top of there. I'll show you what that looks like, and then we're gonna make a lid out of this piece. So I have them now stacked on top of each other. I have the top from the lower one up on top here just to show you what it's going to look like as a lid. So now I need to cut a hole inside of that one. Smaller in diameter obviously than the lid so the lid can sit nicely over that and give us a good seal. We'll put a hinge and a spring on that and I'll show you what that looks like. So I got to weld the two of them together around the center and then I've also got to cut a hole in the bottom and that will be where our concentration point, our reduction point will be. So let me get that done. I'll show you what it looks like. So I just showed you the two tanks sitting on top of each other with the other sides cut out so they're making one large tank. Right now I have both of those tanks flipped upside down. I have the other cuts made. Uh, this piece that you see right here is from the original Square D box cover. I've measured a 5 inch wide piece. I rolled it in a circle. So what I did is I used the original ring. That's no longer welded on there. That was the bottom of the propane tank. It has kind of a template for my size of what I was gonna do for a circle there. And like I said, that's five inches wide from there to there. And I'm now gonna weld that onto a hole I cut into the bottom of that propane tank, just like this or so. And we're gonna use that for the reduction zone for a gasifier. One of the things I noticed is this piece right here, one of my cutouts, is probably gonna be the exact right size to sit in there for the screen end. It looks like it's gonna fit just perfectly. So I'll probably end up using that for the shaker screen in the bottom. Let me go ahead now, I'll get this thing set up. I'm gonna go and remove this collar that you see, those original propane rings. It's gonna be welded to one side, this collar is gonna be welded to the other side. And we're gonna be able to slide the two into each other and create kind of a seal between it. I'll show you that when I get that done. So we've got over here is the top of this propane tank that I cut off. Underneath that I've cut a hole now in there and that's going to be the feed area. That's where we're going to drop all the new wood in. We're going to use this as a lid. I'll have to build a hinge for that. And the way that cup comes up underneath there and the way this is domed, it gives me a really nice seal. So it should be able to seal down with a spring and a latch real well. So there you go. That'll be our lid. It'll just be able to open and shut right there. Alright, so I just showed you those pieces real quickly here. Let me grab that piece. We're going to flip it around, and I'll show you, it's going to sit just like that. And that's going to drop all the way down inside of that lower spot. It's a little hard to get back out of there without somebody's help. Our final piece here for the gasifier is done. I just got done showing you those two pieces. Now I've got the lowest ash bin, basically where the ash is going to get caught, as well as all the gases are going to actually be drawn out of the system down here from this lower propane tank. And that's a five gallon propane tank. I've cut the top of it out as you can see here. That was the exact same size as the bottom collar for this ring. And I'll show you just in a moment here. I'll lift that up and slide it down inside this collar. 
Uh, the collar itself right here that you see was the old ring that was on the bottom of the propane tank, the stabilization ring they put on the bottom. I've made everything so that it fits really nice together so that way you can pull the inner chamber out of this bottom ash catch to be able to dump the uh, ash catch out and keep using it over and over again. So I've just completed our screen for the project and I used one of the cutouts from one of the propane tanks, a 20 millimeter hole saw. And you can see I just made a pattern across there and drilled out the holes. Left a pretty good amount of spacing and material in between each one of the holes. You don't want it too thin. We're now going to mount this inside of our gasifier's lower uh, reduction zone. We're going to try to make a way to shake it as well. Here we are looking down at the very bottom of that reduction chamber. I've got the screen in place now. Everything's done. Kind of walk you up and show you that. I've got a hinge right here. There's some bars going across right here that are giving it kind of reinforcement on the bottom of the screen. You can see a washer here with the end of the cable, which I'll show you in a moment. Our pin's there. This is our bottom of the reduction zone once again, and that gives us the ability to open it up. You can see a cable going all the way up through the reactor there, and I'll show you the end loop is right there by that steel piece there, kind of a pigtail loop. That gives us the ability so we can shake the screen if it plugs up with ash or material. We can sit there and give it a shake from the top. That makes sure it runs real well. So let me just go up here real quick, show you the little pull on that. So here's the other side of it. If I pull it, it shuts the screen down just like that. When you do pull it, it sits down. I'll have a hook right about right there that'll hold it so that it holds the screen up once you've pulled it. That gives us the ability with the wood mass on the screen to give it a shake by just going like this. We'll pull it back up, hook it up on the hook, and now it holds the mass back on the screen again. I've got all the pressure relief system and the mounts and everything ready for the lid. It's kind of hard to show you at this angle. So let me go ahead and finish my welds up. We'll get that thing set down inside of the lower container like I said, and I'll show you what the lid looks like and we'll get it fired up. Somewhere in the filming, I lost the film of the lid's construction, so I thought I'd do a real quick add in here. First of all, I just welded some little loops off of the lid. You can see right here, that little loop. This little steel loop here. I've got springs hooked up to it that go down to these little hand levers here. So they're just basically kind of like an onk. Got a little handle at the bottom. You've got a groove cut in a piece of flat steel. You just pull it down, line it up with the groove and stick it in there. Same thing over here, you just pull it down, line up the groove and stick it in there. And that gives us a pressure relief top so that if anything were to happen, we get a backflash inside of the gasifier. Way if anything were to happen, some backblast inside the gasifier, it blows off that pressure out through the lid. The springs kind of open up for a moment, give it the pop out. Uh, the only other thing here, I've got a hook so we can, once again, let me go ahead and unhook this. There we go. All right, so we can turn the lid over here, set it on there. You can pull it all the way out and let it just hang on the hook. That was kind of the whole idea here. So you have somewhere to hold the lid while you fill it up. So the very final pieces of fabricating our gasifier are completed now. I just want to kind of show you those. First of all, here you can see a double ring, a little air gap at the tip of my thumb right there. That little air gap slides perfectly over this lip right here. So when we put this uh, reactor down inside of our lower ash catch, the reduction zone, this part of it here, slides inside of the ring. That ring's gonna slide up into that slot that you see right there that I created. And I'm gonna put some oven stove door rope right here, some grapho glass inside of there that'll give us a really nice seal when we set this down inside of our ash catch. Also allows us to remove it later on for easy cleaning. Uh, we've also got the cable now hooked up so our door stays shut. I can pull on it as you can see there. I've got just a simple hook holding onto our loop. You undo that. And once again, that allows you to shake your screen at the bottom, making sure the screen stays nice and clean. And you push that back up on there and it's gonna stay there. So those were the simple last pieces that I needed to complete to make this a fully sealed and functioning system. All right, folks, I just wanna show you this. At this point in the construction, what we have is a true downdraft style gasifier. I have no lid on top and we have our reduction zone. So if we just left the lid off and we fed it full of material from the top here, let the air draw be drawn in from the top right through the opening right there, that air would draw through the wood mass, down through the reduction zone and the paralysis zone, and out as wood gas through this uh, output pipe here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill holes right about here 
First, I'm gonna start with four holes, north, south, east, west, and then I'm gonna go in between those. The north, south, east, west four holes are gonna be about half inch diameter, good thick steel tubing, and those are gonna be a high pressure jetting going in towards the center, right at the top of our reduction zone. So the airflow will go in and be drawn down through the reduction zone's wood mass and helping the paralysis process. Like I said just a moment ago, if you wanted to use this as a really simple downdraft gasifier, you wouldn't put the lid on it and you would have left it just as it was. Because we have a design with a lid that's going to build pressure above the wood mass, above the actual burning zone, we're going to want to install a way for fresh air to get right down here to our paralysis area, to our reduction zone, and that's what you see here. So I've installed eight all the way around here. Right around the bottom, eight half inch pieces of tubing that go all the way down. Let me show you inside. And you can see them right there. Poking right out to the edge, allowing it so the airflow from them will come right into the center here of our reduction zone, right at the top of it, allowing all the air to flow down through the reduction zone, giving us a nice hot burn through that entire area. Let me go ahead and show you it from the other side real quick so you can see what it looks like. We'll lift it up, give you a look down inside. So there you go. You can see all the pipes coming down through there. Not really interfering in any way with the uh, wood mass as it goes into the reduction zone. They're all slightly curved, so none of the wood as it goes down through from the top here can actually fall into the tubes or into the pipe openings at the end there. Everything's going to move really nice and fluid right past them. The airflow is all nice and even coming in just at the top of our reduction zone. So the last step of this, folks, is to find a draw fan to get it started. And we're going to have to look for where to find one of those. I'm pretty sure if I look in old RVs, I can find one of those 12 volt, 110 uh, little fans they had in the heaters. And that should work pretty well. So I just got done showing you the air inlets around the bottom. And now I've incorporated the very last part of this. I was looking for a fan that could go in line with the actual output pipe, but I couldn't find one locally. So this is the fan I ended up finding. It's from a pellet stove down at the local hardware store. About a $130 fan. The way I made this work so it could seal off is that I added a two inch plate right here over the face of the fan. You can see the intake to the fan there, some of the squirrel cage in there. And I've got a little piece of threaded pipe with a cap on it. So once we get the system started, I can go ahead and thread that back in there and seal it off so no air draws through the fan and into the gasifier. Because once the gasifier is up and running, once again, your air intake is gonna be these holes all the way around. And I've got plugs in those. These will be how you regulate how many of them you're using. You can pull one of them out and just use one of them or you can go around and pull out every other one or you can go through and pull all eight of them out. And that gives you the ability to kind of regulate the flow inside the stove. I'm gonna put a little bin here that can hold the plugs in there. Something you can set them down in when you're done. So now our gasifying wood stove is completed. And all we're gonna do now is give it a primary test fire. We're gonna put some wood in there. We're gonna get it started up. Uh, we're gonna use a fan to get the wood gas producing out of the bottom down here. I'll remove the tank off the end. That's part of a later on project of something we're gonna install on there. We're gonna get the wood gas coming out of that pipe and see if we can't get it to light. So now that we've built our gasifier, obviously the next part of this is to test out to see if we can get good gas production. So I've got a couple buckets full of chopped up wood here. As you can see, it's ready to go. Got another bucket of it right there. This is going to be the first load we drop in there. That's going to sit right down in the reduction zone, right down inside of here. That'll be the second load I put in there that's going to sit on top of the kind of the larger chunks. Then we're going to put newspaper, which you see a pile of there, on top of that, and we're going to get that started. So we're going to get this little pile here up to temperature, and then once that's got a bit of a cold bed going, we're going to start dumping in our larger buckets of material. All right, so here we go. First step, obviously, is to undo our safety latches here, open up the lid and rotate it out of the way. And we're gonna take our first load of wood I showed you, feed that in there, as much of it as I can get in there. Looks like a good fit. We're now gonna grab a bunch of this and put it on that same thing, just like that. We're going to put some small starter sticks on top of that. Grab a little last of that and some newspaper. We're going to drop some newspaper in on top. A little more stick. Some more newspaper. 
And there we go, that is now ready to light. So I'm gonna go ahead, light up a piece of paper, get that down in there, shut the lid and turn on the fan and show you how well it works. All right, folks, so now we're ready to fire it up. I loaded it up a little bit earlier. I've been waiting for shadowing so we could see the flame from the wood gas a little bit better. It's a very clear flame, so it's gonna be hard to see. Uh, one of the things you see here is a piece of pipe ready to stick into place once we see a phase shift in the gas that's coming out of this pipe here. Phase shift means it's gonna go from kind of a bluish color, kind of your standard smoke color, to more of kind of an orange color, like a, a milky orange color. And that's gonna mean that we're into wood gas territory. And one thing about the wood gas is it needs to be cooled to become more dense or, and more flammable to get it to light. So once I see that, I'm gonna pick up this pipe, I'm gonna stick it up over the end just like that. And down here, we're gonna go and light it on fire. I'm gonna move the camera so you can see that a little better. Here we go. So, let's go ahead and lift up the lid, turn on the fan. Let's see if it lights it nice and easy. Now you can see the smoke is coming out of there nice. It's not dying down. I'm starting to see a little phase shift in the smoke, so we're gonna try one light up here. Now what I'm gonna do is stick this pipe right up over that. Come down here, light the torch, and watch the smoke disappear. So there you go, folks. There is wood gas burning. As long as I can keep this pipe cool enough. One of the problems here is I've got a very short radiator, obviously, so it's gonna be a little difficult to keep it cool enough. But there's the wood gas burning, and I can pull that away. And you can see the smoke once again. Let me hit it with a torch just to light it. And you'll watch it all clear up in a nice flame down here. It's not quite perfectly there yet. Now that's wood gas. At this point, because it's unfiltered, you probably don't want to run an engine on it. But we could use it for cooking and lanterns and anything that would require basically a propane. Right now it's just having a problem staying cool. You can see I've got a rag on the pipe. I'm dousing it with water. As long as the gas gets cool, it's flammable. As this pipe heats up, it's gonna get less and less flammable with the gas because the temperature is too high. Once the temperature drops, it becomes dense and a lot more flammable. So there it is, burning without the torch. We now have a nice clean gas being produced by our wood stove. Right now you can see some of the paint still burning off of it when it's completely set in and won't smoke any longer. And right now you're watching wood gas burn. I just thought I'd walk you up real quick. Show you our wood gas flame. It's a little difficult to see from a distance. I got the torch here in my hand. Let me turn that off. So there you go, folks. Nice and clean, look at that. That's all coming from our gasifier. Glowing pretty red down inside that hole. So there you go, once again we can walk down to the end and that whole time our wood gas torch is just burning away. Until next time folks, I hope you enjoyed. This was Mr. Teslonian.